fake battle. I was telling the Tennessee players that when you rebounded here, you used to tell people, find a body, find somebody, and hit them. I assume you instructed your players to do the same. Just how physical was that game? How proud are you of your team? I know you're not looking for moral victories, but that was a heck of a performance against a great team. Yeah, we knew that coming into this game that rebounding would be very, very important for us. My goal was, um, my goal wasn't to win the rebounding battle. My goal was to be within five. Um, you know, we knew that obviously they were bigger than us, but I felt like um, we had more athleticism I, uh, throughout that game. I thought we had more toughness at times. Um, you know, that, that rebounding, as everybody knows, around here wins championships, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, you know, tonight we were trying to win this game. I knew they, they had us on the boards, but I felt like um, if we would have focused a little bit more on our box outs and hitting and sticking and things that we work on in practice, um, you know, the, the outcome could have been a little bit different. Tennessee had a nine point lead with, with three minutes left and your team, you know, stormed back to send it to overtime. You know, what did you see from your team um, that, you know, allowed you guys to, to get there and give yourselves another chance to win? Um, you know, I told the team after the game, we had fight and we had no fear. Um, and moving forward, we shouldn't have any, any fear in anybody that we play. Um, you know, we just, we said we wanted to take it four minutes at a time, possession by possession, and worry about what happened and what happens next in the huddle. Um, but I, I thought our fight down the stretch to even descend into overtime, the one thing that we didn't do well on one thing was the one thing that sent into overtime, which is a rebound. Um, I, I think there were spots where we gave them second chance points. I think when you look at the free throws and um, how many times we got to the free throw line, um, you know, I felt we should, probably should have gotten there a little bit more. Um, but when you can, once, when another team can shoot the free throw line, get to the free throw line 32 times and 24 points from the free throw line, it's, it's tough to um, overcome that. Coach, you went with a full court press that gave Tennessee a lot of trouble. What kind of went into that decision and then how did you see Tennessee react or your players kind of thrive in that defense? Um, you know, that's part of our identity. Um, we want to play defense and cause hell for 94 feet for 40 minutes. Um, you know, I felt like especially Raven Sims off the bench, Kiari Kane off the bench, um, Shelby Brown, who's one of our starters, they're, more, they're some of our more pressure defenders. Um, I thought those three kids in particular did a great job um, on both ends, but in particular on the defensive end. Um, we wanted to cause chaos. Um, you know, we knew who their ball handlers were. We knew who could handle pressure on their team. Um, and we wanted to pinpoint those and really expose that in the full court. Um, Kai, you know, such a close game, able to send it to overtime. What do you feel like your team is able to take most from tonight moving forward? Um, I think the main thing is us staying together. I feel like this was one of the, I think it was one of the most fun games that we played like so far as far as our energy on the bench and just staying together the whole time. So us staying together and fighting to the end. Kai, Tennessee obviously got out to a quick start, and, and I've seen teams flinch here when that happens. Y'all y'all not only didn't flinch, you, you took the lead and held it at halftime. Just what were the conversations in the huddle? What was the mindset in that first half? Um, our coaches was really like honing in our energy, and before the game, they were preaching, rebounding, and just um, getting us prepared for the game. So, I mean, um, going off of where our coaches were preaching to us, and Feeding off of each other energy is what kept us in the game. Kai, that steal at the end of regulation where you guys were able to, with 12 seconds left, get the ball and score and tie it. Were you guys expecting to try to get a steal out of that? You know, were you surprised that that opportunity came? You know, what kind of, you know, were you guys expecting out of that last play? Um, we weren't surprised. Um, we knew that we had to do something to get a stop, so it didn't come by surprise. We just had to lock in on defense and Coach, 7 of 20 from three, obviously a huge factor keeping you in this game. Was that an emphasis going into this game, just letting the ball fly? Um, no, not necessarily. I think that's probably the mindset if you think you're going into a game to lose. Um, you know, we shoot the three ball pretty well, Most of our, some of our guards. Um, you know, as long as it was in rhythm, I didn't necessarily mind that. I think the biggest stat that I see on our um, stat sheet is that we had 28 points in the paint. 
Um, so, you know, 7 and 20 from the 3 is great, but when you look at that number, 28 points against a team who is bigger than you, I think that, that speaks volumes. Um, Coach, as you move forward, this is obviously your first year of coaching. How does a performance like this help you build culture in your, your program? Um, I think it just shows um, a little bit and a glimpse of who we are as a program. Um, you know, right now we're, we're, we're building chemistry. We're um, learning how to play with each other. Um, I'm learning how to coach them as a, as a group and as individuals, but I think we have some players who should have a lot of confidence coming out of this game. Um, I think we can we see what we can do, um, especially on the defensive end, um, especially in the full court. But I think it's a game where we just continue to build our identity. But moving forward, again, I told the team in the locker room, um, you know, we should have no fear moving forward. Alex, now that the game is over, and how competitive you are, and how locked in you were for this game, but what was it like coming home? I mean, did you share anything with your, your team about your time here, and then just the reception from the crowd? Obviously, Lady Ball fans remember who you were and what you did here. Yeah, you know, Lady Ball fans have always been loyal, um, and they're always going to follow you no matter what you're doing, whether it's coaching, playing, um, starting your own business. Um, there, everybody here really, really supports um, the program and um, whether you're in the program or you're a past player. Um, so I think that's always special when you can come back to a place like this. Um, you can see the history, your players can see the statue um, of Pat outside. You can see the banners up in the, up in the rafters, the players who have had their jerseys retired. It's a, it's a special place and a special program. Um, but I didn't really share any stories because I think I was pretty locked into winning the game. I didn't want to take our focus off of what our, our main goal was coming here, which was to win the basketball game. I, I was going to ask you, you got a pretty good ovation when they announced you before the game. It seemed like you were trying to hold back a smile. Was that the case? No. No. <laughs> Just simply put, <laughs> no. Um, I was more worried about the tip because I knew they were in the back screen off the tip, but I didn't know if they were going to run it because Rakia wasn't playing. So that's really what, honestly, you don't get me blunt. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys.